At the 8th Annual Oncology Practice Summit, we caught up with Dr. Michael Postow, Senior Fellow of Melanoma and Sarcoma at the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. He gave us some details on the latest developments in the treatment of melanoma. Dr. Postow, what, 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 what are the take-home points for a community oncologist in melanoma treatment in the past one year? So I think melanoma is really seeing a, uh, a really excellent time now and that traditional chemotherapy has not been felt to be very effective in this disease and now two very novel strategies, one being immunotherapy and enhancing the body's own immune system to fight cancer and the second being genetically mutation driven targeted therapy against specific mutations. Both of those two treatment strategies have been demonstrating remarkable successes where prior chemotherapy has generally been lacking. and so. Significant advances in both of those areas are really demonstrating significant promise for a number of our patients. So for a practicing doc doctors, what are the unique side effects? You mentioned some of those th things that are not very common for uh, other cytotoxic agents. That's right. So from the immunotherapy standpoint, the treatments that activate the immune system to fight cancer unfortunately can have off-target effects away from the cancer and can react against the body in other ways. Some things to keep in mind, uh, number one is an inflammatory diarrhea type symptom that is called, can be called colitis in certain circumstances and so keeping an eye out for that is very important as those patients need to be treated aggressively with steroids very early on in their course should that develop. Secondarily, there could be inflammation of the liver that can happen, like an inflammatory hepatitis, as well as endocrinopathy and that endocrinopathy can be somewhat insidious in that patients may have some headaches, just not feeling right and it's very important to have that evaluated by checking for thyroid function tests as well as the pituitary axis with ACTH and uh, corticost uh, corticosteroid levels in terms of assessing whether or not patients need replacement thyroid hormone or uh, replacement hydrocortisone for those problems. And so uh, these autoimmune immune related adverse events are very important to recognize and treat early and appropriately with steroids and drug cessation. And the targeted therapies are somewhat unique in their own respect in that Whereas they are very effective in eliminating melanoma and causing these melanomas to regress, in other cells of the body, some of these targeted therapies can actually activate the growths of other types of uh, situations. And some of these can be harmless skin growths, but cases of squamous cell skin cancer have been seen, as well as other type of accelerated growths that may uh, be problematic. And we don't believe that these targeted therapies cause these other cancers, but they may help them grow a little bit more quickly, and so that's important to recognize as well. And you mentioned about responses kind of unique in immunotherapy, so we, we need to be careful when we look at the CT scan. Right, right. So immunotherapy responses are different from traditional targeted therapy and cytotoxic chemotherapy responses in that we don't often have those responses very early. And sometimes patients will take a long time to develop responses and may even look like they're progressing initially before they ultimately have a response and so it's very important in the patient that's asymptomatic to confirm what may look like a pair of initial progression with a subsequent scan four to six weeks later after that first time point evaluation and so we may capture late responses that way and even patients that are developing new lesions which per traditional response criteria may be determined progression some of them may ultimately also respond and so in the absence of any significant symptomatic progression we should really give this treatment time to work and even without response, you can have an improvement in survival. And, and that's uh, correct, and it's a very tricky area, but we believe for immunotherapy, durable, stable disease is also a victory. Certainly, we would like tumors to shrink, and that would be you know, better, but durable, stable disease is very important, and that the percentage of patients that have these long-term survival outcomes with immunotherapy exceeds the percentage of patients that have these responses by radiographic response criteria. and so. We consider it a victory in any of those areas as long as the patient is continuing to do well and is asymptomatic with regard to their disease burden. And what's new coming down in the pipeline? Right, right. right. So we're very excited about, on the immunotherapy standpoint, ipilimumab has been uh, already FDA approved. We're very excited about that. But now there's a new treatment strategy called a PD-1, and so blocking program death receptor 1 has demonstrated remarkable success in phase 1 studies and there are phase 3 studies that are upcoming and, and some that are ongoing to evaluate survival endpoints for this strategy of enhancing the immune system through blocking PD-1. On the targeted therapy standpoint, we are very excited about the results we've seen so far with blocking BRAF through venurafenib and dabrafenib among others. 
and now we're learning how to combine those agents together with MEK inhibition, uh, which is something mentioned in the talk as well. And so strategies of how do we seek when targeted therapy agents or combine them together is going to be very important in delaying the progression that had been previously a problem with BRAF inhibitor monotherapy itself. Yeah. Yeah.